Emotional intelligence refers to the ability to recognize, understand, and manage one's own emotions, as well as the ability to recognize, understand, and influence the emotions of others. Now, emotional intelligence encompasses self-awareness, self-regulation, empathy, uh, motivation, and social skills. Now, you must understand, because there's a question of why is emotional intelligence so important? Now, I'll put this into two levels. It's important on one, a personal level, um, because better it causes better interpersonal relationships, empathy and social skills, foster stronger connections with others, leading to more fulfilling personal relationships. Now, on a professional level, um, emotional intelligence helps to, how will I put this? It enables individuals, okay, to navigate conflicts constructively, um, fostering a positive work environment and reducing workplace tension. In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down um, this into, I'm going to be explaining three habits and breaking them down individually. So let's start with habit one, which is self-awareness. Now, self-awareness in the context of emotional intelligence involves being attuned to your own internal state and having insight into how um, emotions impact thoughts, behaviors, and interactions with other people. Now, self-aware individuals are able to accurately assess their emotions in various situations and understand how those emotions influence their decision-making and relationships. They also have a very realistic perception of themselves and are open to feedback for self-improvement. Now let's look at some examples of how highly emotionally intelligent people demonstrate self-awareness. And the first point I'm going to be giving is acknowledgement of um, strengths and weaknesses. These people are honest with themselves about their strengths and their weaknesses. They're not in denial at all. Recognizing areas where they need improvement, as this is very important. Um, the second point is emotional regulation. They can regulate their emotions in a healthy manner, recognizing when they are becoming overwhelmed or stressed and taking proactive steps to managing their emotions before it begins to escalate. Um, the third point I'm going to be giving you as an example is authenticity. They are authentic and genuine in their interactions with other people, um, staying true to their values and beliefs, while also being am open to different people's perspectives. Now, it's important to know that we're always improving. So I'm going to give you some tips um, to help improve self-awareness in an individual. And number one is journaling. I'm sure you saw this coming. It's important to keep a journal to record your thoughts, um, feelings, and experiences. Reflecting on your entries, which is the things you've written down, um, can help you identify patterns in your behavior and help you to gain insights into your emotions and your motivations. Number two, seek feedback. Ask for feedbacks from your trusted friends, not just anybody, trusted friends, family members, or colleagues about your strengths, weaknesses, and, you know, any areas for improvement. And you must be open um, to constructive criticism and use it as an opportunity for growth. Don't see it as an attack. Number three is you must learn to practice self-reflection. Set aside time regularly um, to reflect on your day, your week, focusing on your emotions, your reactions, and your interactions with other people. Consider what triggered certain emotions during your day or during your week and or behaviors and how you can respond more effectively in the future. The fourth point is explore your values and beliefs. 
take time um, to clarify your values, your beliefs and priorities in life. Understand what is important to you so that it helps you to make decisions that align with your authentic self and lead to a more meaningful life. Let's look at the second habit I'm going to be talking about today, which is self reflection. Now, self-reflection um, involves being aware of your emotions, understanding how they influence your thoughts and actions, and effectively uh, managing them to achieve desired outcomes. Okay. Self-regulation also encompasses the ability to resist temptation, delayed gratification, and also stay focused on long-term goals despite distractions or challenges. Now, when it comes to emotional intelligence, self-regulation plays a very crucial role in several ways, and we'll be discussing some of them. And one of them is emotional control. Now, self-regulation will allow a person to manage intense emotions, um, such as when we're talking about frustration, anger, or even anxiety, preventing them from escalating and causing harm to themselves or even to other people. Number two is through decision-making. Self-regulation will enable you to make rational and reasonable decisions, okay, rather than driven solely by, you know, impulsive or emotional reactions. Number three is through conflict resolution. People with strong self-regulation skills are better equipped to solve conflicts peacefully and constructively without allowing their emotions to escalate or cloud their judgment. Now let's look at some examples of self-regulation and, you know, in action, literally, how do we make this happen in our day-to-day -day lives? And one way, and one example I thought I would give is through healthy eating habits. Um, so let's say you're trying to adopt a healthier eating habit, just like I am, but you're tempted by unhealthy snacks at a social gathering. It could be a party, a friend's house. Despite the temptation, you practice self-regulation by consciously choosing to resist the unhealthy snacks, the sodas, and opt for nutritious alternatives instead um, by regulating your impulses and sticking to your health goals. You maintain control over your eating habits and support your overall being. Remember, it's easier said than done, but that doesn't mean that it's um, unachievable. Number two is delayed gratification. Let's say you set a goal to save money for a house or maybe to pay fees for a course, but you're tempted to splurge on a, a bag, a pair of shoes that you don't need. Rather than giving up to that immediate gratification, you exercise self-regulation um, by resisting the impulsive spending and sticking to your budget. You remind yourself of the long term benefits of saving for that home or for that course you want to take. Prioritize your financial goals and make conscious decisions that align with your priorities. Okay, so now let's look at some strategies um, for improving self-regulation. So the number one strategy that I'll be giving you today is identify your triggers, okay? Pay attention to situations, to thoughts, or people that trigger a strong emotional reaction or impulse in you. Um, once you've identified these things, develop strategies to manage these triggers more effectively, such as taking a pause, practicing self-soothing techniques, or reframing negative thoughts. Number two strategy is improve time management. Enhance your time management skills to prioritize tasks, set realistic deadlines, and avoid procrastination. Break your task, okay, into smaller chunks. Use time blocking techniques and limit distractions to stay focused and on track. Number three strategy is create a structured environment. Mm-hmm. 
establish routines and structures in your daily life to um, promote consistency and self-discipline. Set up your environment for success by removing temptations and creating reminders and organizing your space for optimal productivity. You need to be very intentional about this. Number four is learn to celebrate your wins. Celebrate, you know, acknowledge and celebrate your successes no matter how small. Recognize your efforts and your achievements along the way and use them as a motivation to continue practicing self-regulation and pursuing your goals. You'll be amazed at how well, this actually helps you. Now, let's quickly move to habit number three that I'll be talking about today. And we're talking about empathy. Now, empathy, when it comes to emotional intelligence, is the ability to understand and share the feelings and um, perspectives and experiences of others. It involves not only recognizing and acknowledging the emotions of others, but also being able to um, imagine yourself in their position, feeling what they are feeling. Empathy allows a person to connect with others deeper, fostering understanding and compassion, and also very meaningful relationships. Now, in the context of emotional intelligence, empathy plays a very crucial role, as you may already imagine, and it does in several ways, and I'll be explaining some to you today. Number one way is cultural competence. Empathy, you must understand, fosters cultural competence by encouraging people to understand and appreciate diverse perspectives and experiencing. You see, by empathizing with people from different backgrounds, Individuals can bridge cultural divides, promote inclusivity, and cultivate a more harmonious and equitable society. Number two, effective communication. Empathy improves communication by enabling a, a person to listen actively and also to respond empathetically to others' thoughts and feelings. By understanding others' perspectives and emotions, you are able to convey their messages more effectively and resolve conflicts constructively. So important. Number three, building relationships. You must understand that empathy enhances interpersonal relationships by creating a sense of connection and trust. When individuals or when people feel understood and validated, they are more likely to open up and communicate openly, leading to stronger bonds and mutual support. And this happens in both personal and professional um, spaces. Now, let's look at some examples of how highly emotionally intelligent people exhibit empathy. Number one is through active listening. They practice active listening by focusing, fully focusing on the person speaking, maintaining eye contact and providing non-verbal cues to show that they are engaged and attentive. They refrain from interrupting and ask clarifying questions to demonstrate understanding and validate the speaker's feelings. Number two is through the validation of emotions. You see, they validate others' emotions by acknowledging and accepting their feelings without judgment or criticism. Instead of minimizing or dismissing emotions, they offer empathy and support, constantly reassuring others that their feelings are valid and worthy of consideration. Now, let's look at, I think, about four strategies for cultivating empathy in oneself. Number one is by reflecting and learning from your interactions. You must learn to reflect on your interactions with others and identify opportunities to practice empathy. Consider how you responded to people today, yesterday, um, how you responded to them, their emotions and needs, and explore ways to improve your empathetic skills in further or future interactions with people. Number two is by practicing non-judgment. Suspend judgment and refrain <laughs> from making assumptions about others 
based on their actions or behaviors. Instead, approach interactions with an open mind and a willingness to understand without prejudice or bias. Number three, listen to diverse perspectives. Don't be one-sided. Seek out diverse perspectives and experiences to broaden your understanding of the world. Engage with people from different backgrounds, cultures, and viewpoints as this helps to challenge your assumptions and expand um, your empathy. You'll be amazed at how well this works. Number four is practice active listening. Make a conscious effort to listen attentively um, when others speak. Focus on um, the speaker's words, maintain eye contact, and refrain from interrupting. Show genuine interest in understanding other people's perspective before responding. Now, ladies, this is where I'm going to be ending today. As I promised, I have shared with you three habits of highly um, emotionally intelligent people. I've also shared with you examples of how they, you know, practice these habits and also strategies to help improve these habits. Please remember that implementation is very important. Practicing these things is what will help you to become a better person emotionally because I find that we live in a world where You'll be amazed, but we still have quite a large number of people with very low EI. And this is very sad. We can do better. We should do better. And we must do better. Thank you so much for watching today's video. And I'll see you at the next one. Bye-bye.